Hey everyone, welcome back to the Magnanimous Collective. I'm your host, Sean Kubota. Let's start off with a deep breath into the belly and let it go. Oh yeah, dropped in. Today I have a really special guest. This guy's the Dos Equis guy, pretty much. He's one of the most interesting men that I know. <laughs> he impresses me in so many ways and I admire him in so many ways. Um, not only is he a father, he is a former police officer of eight years. He's also one of the best break dancers I know, and that's how we met in college. He's also, like me, an uh, Asian man of shorter stature that doesn't let anything hold him back, that is a badass, who's vivacious and has tenacity that I look up to, that I'm like, damn. Everybody, welcome Aston Chan. Thank you for being here, brother. Anytime, brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm stoked for this one. So, <clears throat> I know about your story, but... For everyone who doesn't know, tell us about how you grew up, like how police work is in your veins, how you've come to be, and the challenges that you faced throughout that time. Yeah, man. Um, basically, a little, a little complicated, but it's all over the world as well. So I was born over here in, uh, in the States. Mm -hmm. I was actually born in Highland Park, Illinois. Oh. But then I grew up in Hong Kong, majority of my life, right? I was going back and forth. So... My mom brought me back as like a like a newborn or whatnot. So when I was there, my father was actually a police officer in Hong Kong. Mm. But then a little, little backstory about Hong Kong, if y'all don't know. Hong Kong was rented from China to Britain after the war for 50 years. So Britain agreed to return Hong Kong to China in July of 1997. So I was there. I was born in 92. So I lived in Hong Kong while Hong Kong was under Britain ruling so my dad was actually a british royal police officer of hong kong so, what <laughs> yeah so he was trained by the british uh royal forces to become a police officer so he was a police officer when i was a kid um wow. to be honest i don't remember much but i just have pictures of him being a cop and you know he i you know, vaguely remember he brings me to police stations me his buddies mm -hmm. stuff like that so um I have pretty good memories, but can't really remember specifics, but I just know that he was a British Royal Police officer. So ever since a kid, you know, looking up to my dad, mm. that's that's all in my mind, right? Growing up, I'm going to be a cop. That's it. Yeah. Nothing else in my mind, just that. Mm. <laughs> so growing up in Hong Kong, basically half my life, um, came back to the U.S. after my grandparents passed away. So grew up, you know, middle school all the way through till now. I'm, I've been in the States from bouncing from Chicago to L.A because my family is originally from Chicago. Got you. So tell us, like, for one, you were really, you really admired your father. Yeah, 100%. Right. What were the qualities that made you admire him? Because in the Western world, especially in California, for instance, you know, West Side smoke weed every day, fuck the police. Like, there's a different perspective, <laughs> right? And a lot of us grow up with that, especially me being an L.A. dude, like not knowing. And it wasn't until I really got to know my uncle, who was a reserve sheriff and okay. who was also my bandmate in he really shed some light on things. So I'm curious about like how you threw out all that. Was it just like, oh, dad is God, I admire him? Or were there attributes and qualities where you were like, that's a real dude right there? Um, I'm going to be honest, man. My dad is not like the best guy. You know, there, there, there's, there's always problems. <laughs> of course. You know, yeah, yeah. growing up. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, come, I came from a broken family, you know. Mm, growing mm. up, seeing my mom and my dad always argue and fight, you know. Mm, mm. He's, he's not the best guy, but... Coming from, like you said, we're, we're Asians, right? Asian culture. Yeah. Family's very big. Um, it's very, my family grew up, I'm very traditional. So you always look up to your elders and your family, right? Mm. So you kind of put all the negatives aside, right? You only see the positives mm. and you always look up to somebody. You're always trying to find a role model in your life growing up in, 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 in an Asian culture, family, right? Right. You always got to follow somebody, you know? Obviously, most of them are like, oh, yeah, you better be a doctor. You better be a lawyer. You better do some, you know, go to college. You know, the, yeah. the typical steps to become an adult. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of looked up to my dad because he's there and he he's like the man of the house, right? So I just kind of fell into his footsteps and that's all I knew, just becoming a police. Like, he always tells me all about stories. So when he tells me stories as a kid, like, oh, man, he's a badass, dude. You know, I want to be just like him when I grow up. Mm -mm -mm. You know, it kind of... He planted that seed in my head. Yeah. And I kind of just, you know, fertilized it and then manifested it as I grew up, you know? Yeah. To kind of follow his footsteps and be a better person than he was. Mm. 
at the same time, you yeah. know, wearing his shoe. Right. So what's interesting about what you're saying right now is, and this is a, this is a projection. I don't, I don't know if this is true and how you are thinking <clears throat> and feeling, but what I can say is for someone who knows you and knows people and sees people and is able to feel them and feel like when they're being genuine, there are not many people like you. Like there are not many Asian brothers who are in our stature who aren't just, you know, down on themselves or not showing up. You show up, I show up in a big way. I show up and I take space. You do that in a way where I'm like, damn, I'm even impressed. And I'm usually the one that's doing it really hard. So <laughs> I'm curious about how that all happened. Was it because your dad was a cop and you were just like, hey, this is us. We're like this. What were the moments in life that brought you to that space where you were like, bro, this is me? You know, like you said, right? You know, I'm, I'm 5'4". Mm -hmm. I was a buck 20, right? Yeah. Like growing up, growing up in Asia was cool, right? Because everybody's the same. Got you. But going going back to, you know, being confident, right? Yeah. It's just growing up in Asia, you got everybody is the same. Everybody grew up the same, same stature or whatnot, right? There's no right. No, no, no kind of discrimination. Totally. But I grew up in Hong Kong half my life and coming over here in about like third grade and sixth grade. Mm. And English like my third language, right? So oh. I, obviously my English sucked, right? When I first got here. I gotta go to ESL and all that stuff. You know, going through bullying since a kid. Yeah. You know, I grew up grew up in Chicago. It was, it, it's not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. So obviously, also the Western culture yep. they portray Asians as you know timid, right. your typical geek. You you gonna be an engineer, you are gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, whatnot. Right. So they got a stereotype going on already. So yeah, for me growing up by myself, I had to learn it the hard way. Right, going through the bullying going right. through the process, mm -hmm. you know, again, jumped, whatever you got to do, right? So as as time progresses, as I'm growing older, I'm seeing things from my perspective mm -hmm. rather than what other people projects onto my onto me, right? Right. So I know that because of my stature, because of my stereotype mm. that were given to me by society, I had to step out of that. Mm. I had to prove people that, hey, not everybody's like that. Right. Not because I not because, oh, I'm I'm gonna be arrogant. I'm 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 gonna be the best of the best. No. Yeah. It's it's self love. Like yeah. like you know, right? You you gotta love yourself. You gotta embrace what God gave you, right? Mm. This is who I am, this is what it is. Yeah. And I'm gonna manifest, I'm gonna show people that I could be something else different. Yeah. Other than what you think I am. So, you know, start something small, right? Um, make conversations as simple as talking to people. Like walking up to strangers or even saying hi to random people. Yeah. Like that's a small step mm. to a bigger goal that you're going to achieve. That's how I started. You know, start learning how to speak English, speak into the mirror, listen to music, talk to yeah. people, and just don't be afraid. Step out of your, my own comfort zone yeah. and just start speaking to people. And, you know, step by step, you just kind of, you kind you kind of lose that fear as, as, as you go through the process, right? You lose the fear. Yeah. All this is fear, right? People are afraid. People are scared of rejection. Yeah. People are thinking of what other people might think about me. Mm -hmm. I could care less what you think about me, man. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna do my thing. As long as I'm, not, I'm doing the right thing, I'm doing yeah. a good thing. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. So as long as your conscience is good, so just live on and do what you do, and you know, be good to people, and everything will come come to you. That's it. Yeah, you know, that's, that's it. Well, <clears throat> I love that. Thank you words of wisdom good stuff and to cycle it back around you're the one who made that choice yeah right like nobody else can do it for you no one can do it for you and that's the interesting thing is that there's so many people there's so many individuals and you we'll talk about the world in a second but you see where the world's at you see how many people have so much tragedy befall them and what do they do with it they just use it as a crutch in order to like be vampires on on other people, on society, be like, oh, you know, this happened to me. And so therefore, I'm powerless. It's like, what? No. Like yeah. in, in all those moments, like we could be, I could be, I mean, for one, we probably wouldn't be sitting here if you were that person, but I could be sitting across from a completely different Aston Chan. Yeah. You know, if you hadn't chosen in those moments to be like, yo, no one's going to save me. It's no, and, and, and even more so, it's no one's like right and authority to even save me. 
because this is this is this is your life. Like if someone comes up and tries to save you from something, do you even learn the lesson? Right? It's almost like free getting something for free. Like someone hands you something for free, do you value it? No. Like you have to you have to pay for the things that are valuable. You have to like earn the things that are valuable. The hard things, the difficult things are valuable, not the easy free things. Yeah. Right? And those build character. And so what I love about you is that your character and what you've cultivated and built is such a unique color. It's such a unique type of persona and person because through all those moments of adversity, you were like, ah, you know what? That's what they think. That's what society's dictating of me that I should be. I should be this guy or people are going to perceive me this way. All right. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do the opposite. That's fucking dope. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, to pick it off kind of yeah, off yeah. that, right? So if you allow other people to project their idea and ideology onto yourself, yeah. that's who you're going to become, right? Because you're following what they want you to become because right. you care so much about what other people think. Mm. So that in turns, you internalize that and you become mm. who they want you to become. Right. And you got to be mentally strong, right? Um, like they always say, you know, mind over matter. Yeah. So you as, as an individual has to be mentally strong and mentally prepare yourself for what the world has come has, has prepared for you basically because the world is not pretty. Mm. And for somebody to find out the hard way and not know how to deal with it, yeah. they're gonna dwindle down to some, like you said, right, helplessness, whatever they do, whatever excuses they can come up with, that's what they're gonna use, right? Right, unless they opt to choose otherwise like you did, right? But like, yeah. the interesting thing and where we find so much relation and so much relief in being able to converse, conversate with each other is that we understand what's being perpetuated out in the world through the media, through the government, through all these things, this narrative of victimhood. And no one knows better than a former police officer of eight years working in LAPD, right? In the, in the mucky muck yeah. of the gnarliness. Tell us, about, tell us about like an inside scoop, you know, in whatever you feel comfortable sharing in regards to like what we might not really understand and realize. And the thing, the reason why I love you being who you are is if I was sitting across from a Caucasian male in his mid 30s, 40s or something like that, all of a sudden all these projections are once again cast onto someone, right? And then his value is diminished, right? Because he's, oh, he's a white male who's a cop. Or even if it's a black male, they're like, oh, well, he's one that turned or something like that. When the fuck do we hear Asian voices? When the hell do we hear... Uh, a shorter Asian man who's fucking buff as fuck, who can do air flares, <laughs> who's also a cop talking about what he sees. I've never heard it. And that's why I'm so grateful you're here. So tell us, t tell me about what I don't know or what people might not know. That's so a little background. I'm with, um, I'm actually with LA airport police, which gotcha. is, which is a separate agency from LAPD, but work very closely. And we're still part of the city of LA, but we majority handle calls in the airport and surrounding areas basically. Got you. So we do assist with LAPD. Uh, our closest division is Pacific Division. But, um, you know, I, I started when I was 22, graduated at 23 years old mm. from the academy. You know, I was a young buck, you know. I don't know, yeah. I don't know much about what police work is really like. Mm. Um, obviously, I've been there about eight years. So I did about six and a half years with LA. And I did another like nine months with uh, Hanover Park Police Department, which is over in um, the west side of Chicago. Gotcha. So I did work two separate departments. And, you know, you guys can guess you see a lot of things on a daily basis. Every day is different. Yeah. You see the best and you see the worst of everything. And you yeah. see the best of everybody, you see the worst of everybody. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of sad, you know, because what we see from our eyes are totally different from what other people see nowadays right because right. what do people do nowadays right they go on their social media tiktok yeah. instagram yeah twitter the news yeah it's cool right you, you get some sort of truth mm -hmm. but they give you whatever they want you to see right right so you don't really see from point a to point b yeah you see whatever segments they think is going to gain views right so a lot of them are false right a lot of them partially true so it's yeah. sad that people just kind of take surface value on everything nowadays which is very frustrating right to mm -hmm. even to speak with somebody yeah to speak with somebody they cannot agree with you because they don't have a complete picture of a situation that you're talking about 
Yeah. Because they're so stuck on that one point and that's all they're going to argue with you about. Right. And, you know, being a police officer, you see everything, right? Especially in California on the yeah. West Coast. Yeah. You, that, for biggest problem, homelessness, mm. mental illness. Yeah. Um, you see, you see homeless everywhere, man. Yeah. They build houses on the side of the street. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it all over social media, right? You see people building like two story homes on the side of the street. Oh, they're breaking into our spots. I got my car stolen in, in December. Yeah. They try lighting a fire on the telephone pole. This is, this is my grandparents' apartment complex. Like we deal with this stuff. Yeah. You're in Westwood. Yeah. And I also got to be like, can I even protect this place? Because I'm going to get incriminated. Yeah. If I throw it out. You know what I mean? It's like. That's the problem, right? What do you do? You as a citizen. Yeah. Want to protect yourself, but you are afraid yeah. to get in trouble. Right. Because it's criminals paradox. got more rights, right? It's in a, a paradox, way. bro. It's a trip. Got you know, them. I, 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 I would arrest people with a gun. Yeah. You know, you book them. Yeah. You release them. Hey, here's a ticket. Make sure you go to court. Silly. And I'm still trying to book the gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not even done booking my. I'm not even done writing my report. He's walking he's out. Already gone. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. And these are not like one time offender, right? Of course. Yeah. Like their their rap Repeat. sheets are like dictionaries. Consistent. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that's something that takes a lot more than just individuals to change you know that that's 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 above anybody's pay grade right because yeah. it's, it's all governmental it's all political whatever they got to do but for me to see this on a daily basis is saddening right yeah. because you have to deal with people that are suffering and can't do anything about it right and they're frustrated yeah and they're frustrated not with the government not with the policies right because they don't know about it right and who they're they're projecting their anger onto police officers. Exactly. Which police so officers are only doing what they can do and their hands are kind of tied, right? Yeah. And, and that's the laws upheld by the public. Exactly. Not by them. So yeah. we're just enforcing whatever is, you know, written in law. In current. Exactly. Yeah. So in a way, police officers are always burnt <clears throat> out too. They're, they're, they're pretty burnt out on a daily basis. They work overtime. Bet. So you got to understand... You know, sometimes you go on the same call five, ten times a day. Yeah. And there's nothing they can do. And you are mother effing this cop that's yeah. trying to help you out. Right. And he's explaining to you, hey, I can't do this because of this and this and this. Yeah. And now you're just going back and forth in circles, right? Yeah. What needs to be changed, right? You know, vote vote for the right policy. Yeah. Vote for the right law when it comes out. Read your ballots, right? 100%. And, you know, we... As a former police officer and the cops out there, it's a rough job, man. It's, it's rough. I mean, I can only imagine. What I will say, one of the things that changed my perspective entirely, you know, because I grew up being the L.A., you know, fuck the police, West Side smoking weed, <laughs> just the, the fucking stupid shit, you know? I grew up as that and a hip-hop head and all these things. And yeah, being yeah. like, oh, this is my identity, right? Because I'm from L.A., all this, like, trying to find myself. Really silly. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until my uncle was like, have you heard of Suicide by Cop? And I was like, what are you talking about? And YouTube, it, a lot is on there. And yet people never even know to search that. And what that did for me is open my eyes to the perspective of policemen who were pleading for people to put down knives, put down guns, put down whatever they got in their hand because they really don't want to kill the person. Yeah. Like there's some fucked up cops, right? Obviously. And it's a fucked up job. It could fuck you up yeah. to the point of no return. It can, right? And there are also a lot of good cops who are just trying to do their job. And there are people who are too afraid to take their lives themselves and go and literally try to attack policemen and oftentimes injure or kill them sometimes. And so they have to retaliate. And guess what? Those cops have families. Yeah. You're a family man. You have children. Yep. And you, have, you, you love your parents. Like You have people that you love that you want to come home to. And you're doing a job that you feel is just and righteous. And yet there are qualms with it, right? Because there's laws that are upheld by the citizens and voted in, which you're just upholding in, in you know, in the streets, but they're, you're not dictating the laws, right? The people are. Yeah. And you have people you love. And yet when people see a person in uniform, especially a person who's Caucasian, they just see, oh, this tyrannical person because I know of some bad eggs. And then it's just a projection all day. Yeah. They don't think about the humanity of the individual. And it's, and it's, so, it's so foolish and it's stupid. And it's, uh, it makes me really upset because these individuals... And this is the interesting thing. We'll talk about boundaries too and all this stuff. But these altruistic, quote unquote, altruistic individuals who get caught up in this saviorhood and this 
revolutionary rebel type of mentality where they're like, oh, this person caused harm. Oh, how dare they cause harm? And it's like, are you really being fully holistic and, and compassionate to the whole? Because that person has a family too. Yeah. Right? It's it's so, and like you said, it's perpetuated through the media, it's perpetuated through TikTok or whatever it is. But it's like, these people, these police officers have families. Most of them are family people. They have children. They want to come home. Yeah. And to deny them just because of the work they do, because there are there are bad, I've been in all forms of business and I've climbed to the top and been like, oh, here's, an, you do an office or you become the executive chef or you become this or that, whatever. I'm like, I see how grotesque it is at the top, how tyrannical and potentially yeah. gnarly it is on the top. And I've left. It's like that in any organization. So to, even nonprofits that are charities. So to just point the blame at police when their job is much more dangerous than being a, a CEO or a worker at a nonprofit or a restaurant or something like that and try to dictate or, or try to project onto all of them. It's, it's a travesty, honestly. And it also shows where we're at with our human consciousness. Yeah. Because it's like, yo, we're not seeing this appropriately, at least in my opinion. But I think you would agree because yeah, you're, 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 you've lived it, you know? Yeah. I mean, to talk about that, right? Yeah. People see that once you put on that uniform, right. you're an enemy. Like you're right. an enemy right off the bat, yeah. right? Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are as an individual. Yeah, humanity's gone. It's gone. As soon as you put right. on that uniform, for some reason, people look at you like, like you're, you're you're like a killer robot, basically. You're out there to kill. And who are they going to call when someone's breaking down the door? <laughs> yeah, right? They're not calling Steve next door. <laughs> but, you know, when you show hiding. up, then they mother <laughs> F you, right? But then now yeah. you call me. It's like, yeah. what, what? It's like a double-edged sword, right? It's an abusive relationship. It, it, it's weird. Very, very abusive, man. It, it's it, weird. It's, and it, it, it's ongoing. It, yeah. It's never going to end. That's, that's the worst part, right? And you just got to take it. Well- Hopefully it ends. These conversations happening lead to it ending. Because the thing that makes it end is consciousness actually evolving and humans not being as stupid as they are. <laughs> because if they don't know, they don't know. Because yeah. we're, we're not even a space of ignorance necessarily because they're so oblivious. Yeah. to, to ig Ignorant, you got to ignore. So you're consciously knowing something. And at a level, they do know it probably at the back of their heads. But a lot of these people are completely oblivious. They just are like, oh, whatever I see here, yeah. oh, whatever common consensus is, this is what I agree with because I'm so afraid to be denied and rejected by friends and community because yeah. I'm so insecure. It's I'm true. so vulnerable. I'm so weak because I don't even know myself. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a lot of building. There's a lot of growth for, for people to do to get there for sure. Yeah. And I have to have hope that it can shift and be better for our children, for our grandchildren and oh, so forth. Of course. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, no way. But you, <laughs> you know, it's crazy yeah. you brought that up, right? Yeah. Like, man, you want to fit in so bad mm. that you're going to accept false information. You're going to, you, just because you want to fit in, right? You don't want to yeah. stand out. Yeah. Like nowadays, if you're going against whatever society is going with, yeah. Like, man, you, you're labeled like some severely. Yeah. Like you're labeled real bad, yeah. right? Yeah. You're, you're labeled to a point where you're casted. Yep. out of society yep i mean cancel yeah I, that's know? like and it's, it's immediate bro immediate <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, like yeah. there's no there's no understanding there's no talking there's no conversations yeah because nowadays people can't even conversate <laughs> right you can't even sit down and talk with somebody without hurting somebody's feeling you can't the... even talk about <laughs> opinions anymore right yeah well <laughs> so i mean you, I, I gotta say this because we were going to talk about it i was going to say it earlier like the triggering, the whole, I'm getting triggered, yep. all this stuff. It's, it's so interesting how through society and through media and all this stuff, they've glamorized, popularized emotional irregulation. Like people not choosing to regulate their emotions as a mature adult yep. and literally throwing tantrums as, I won't even call them adults, as old children, throwing tantrums. And acting like that's empowerment, acting like that's just, and also reinforce not having boundaries. Yeah. Right. And and the interesting thing that happens when we let people have tantrums and glamorize that and have them be rebels and revolutionaries and supreme altruists that are trying to save everyone except for the people who are actually, you know what I mean? The ones who are actually in danger. Like, oh, yeah. let's save the actual victims. Yeah. Let's save yeah. the actual criminal. Let's save the criminals. Let's save the people who, like, one big thing is the homeless, right? Yeah. So what's interesting, we're seeing homelessness grow. 
how is there a correlation between not having strict boundaries? And when I say boundaries, I'm talking about boundaries of all sorts, right? Like even within my own family, I'm going through dictating familial abusive relationships with me and another member of my family and other members of our family. And if we allow for those relationships to exist, if we allow for those boundaries to keep being crossed, nothing ever gets done. It's almost like enforcing the boundary is a form of love, right? Just like a child, for instance, right? A child, th you know, throwing a tantrum at the, at the supermarket or anywhere. They're like, oh, just let them cry, right? I was talking about this with, with my last guest that I had a child or I had a family member who was just acting out and the, they're distant family members and was like asking, like pleading, you know, through his actions for a boundary, for someone to tell him, hey, cut that out. This is how we act. Mm -hmm. And no one was giving him that. And it took me being like, what the fuck? All right, cut it out. All right. <laughs> this is how we do it. And he lit up. It was like. He lost it, huh? No, no, no. He, oh, no, he, oh, no. he, was, he was happy. He was about happy. It. Oh, wow. He, it was like he kept prodding and prodding and prodding, and like being like, please love me. Tell me where the line is. Tell me where I can be so that I know my reality better. And I'm, I'm yearning for that. And that was so good. Like, I thought that I was going to be overstepping. It was so good for him. And also, I relate that to humanity as a whole because for my relationships, family relationships, romantic, all these things, interpersonal, having healthy boundaries is a form of love. And yet throughout society, we like see it as this form of, oh, this, this is being mean or this is hurting. And so how is the homeless population growing? How is all of this stuff growing and just proliferating when we literally have no strict consequences or boundaries for our actions? Like, if we talk about addiction, right? If you don't stop someone, for, if there's not a boundary or consequence for using, probably just going to keep using, yeah. right? So how, how is that love, right? It, boundaries, right, bro? So there are so many laws mm. that sets up a boundary yeah. in regards to homelessness, yeah. in regards to drug abuse. Right in regards to almost everything, right? Yeah. Like you said, for some reason, society just kind of overlooks it. Yeah. Politicians just kind of be like, okay, it's cool. Give them a free pass. And you give them one free pass. Yeah. It takes advantage of that, right? You give one yep. person yep. a free pass. Everybody expects a free pass, right? Yeah. And just kind of snowball effects, right? Yeah. So that's why all this issues yeah. in greater Los Angeles area yeah. is growing out of control. Totally. And it's to a point where now, if you want to enforce a law, you're wrong for enforcing a law because right. not enforcing a law is normalized. Yep. So everything is backwards. Yep. And I feel like if we don't do anything, in a way, we're all almost too late because now everybody's looking at it like, okay, why are you even doing this? You know, it's, it's, it's been going on for this many years. We're not doing, how come you're enforcing a law today? Yeah, you I know, mean, that's a good point. It's finish your thought and then I'll, I'll respond. It's yeah. crazy because yeah. if you ask, right? Yeah. Different counties within California yeah. will enforce different types of laws, right? Right. So it's all different. you would ask criminals, you ask somebody that yeah. knows about the law, they'd be like, okay, would you go to Orange County or Riverside County <laughs> yeah. to do the same thing yeah. you do in LA County? No way. Right? Why? Because there's, there's boundaries. There's yeah. consequences for that. Exactly. <laughs> I mean that that's it right and and that's it right there and one of the things that's interesting to think about when it comes to humans right like if you're if you're being a child remember I said like older children mm -hmm. right like we consider anyone who's past pubescent age and who's older as an adult is that really an adult you know what I'm saying it's not yeah and what do children do a lot of children like to get away with things. Yeah. They like to be sneaky. They like to keep pushing the boundaries yep. until someone says, hey, that's the boundary. And they're like, oh, oh okay. Yep. And for some of them, and this is where I talk about the altruist and the revolutionary and the rebels and all these people being like these ultimate saviors where they're like, you got to save everyone. Sometimes that's the thing that they need. And you can't save everybody. Yeah. You can't save everybody. And if that's the actual boundary, if that's the the consequence that they need in order to actually learn so that they turn their life around. Like for me, I'll take, for instance, myself, right? 
I had to lose everything, like all of my savings, all of everything for me to, to do what I'm doing now. Yeah. I had to get literally just crucified over all these things that I had done, all this money I'd put in everything and had it fail in order for me to finally be like, oh, okay, yeah, I got to do the thing that I know I've been needing to do. And it ha I had to push myself to this limit of these consequences where I'm literally like, you know, borderline suicidal, just like at the end of my rope in order for me to change. And so if that's what it's going to take for me, I'm not saying it's going to take that for everyone, but if, if that's what it took for me is helping someone who's obviously like using drugs or taking advantage of the system or just trying to sneak their way throughout life, waiting for that boundary, waiting for that consequence. Is that actually us doing the loving thing? And that's my big question. Because to me, it's not. To me, it's the opposite. To me, it's actually us believing it and it at a turn. And this is why I feel like it's perpetuated through media and stuff. And is that at a level, it's insidious. At a level, it's, it's evil. A level, it keeps feeding it. And I think, like you said, like it's too late. I don't necessarily, necessarily think it's too late because it's getting so bad that we have to look at it. <laughs> And I completely understand the sentiment because it's just gotten out of control. But it's, yeah. it's to the point where it's like, I feel like for people who maybe thought it was a good idea, them seeing that they're literally manufacturing through their own will and through their own, like creating the laws themselves and upholding and all these things, like they're literally seeing that they're manufacturing Gotham City. Yeah, I think exactly. that that's a good wake up call because coming from someone who's been spiritual, altruistic, all these things, <laughs> it's like, all that stuff, you know, ideal is not always real. Yeah. You know? And and you know that more than anyone yeah. because you've been in the fucking furnace of it. Yeah. <sighs> and you know, it's it's so hard to explain to people, bro. Yeah. It's hard to tell people, hey, this is what life really is. You right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Unless they go and experience it, like experience it themselves or they become yeah. a victim themselves. And by that time, if you're a victim, you're it's already too late, right? Yeah. Then afterwards you're thinking like why? Like, why Why is this happening? Why is it me? Why am I being targeted? Yeah. Like, how come nothing was there to prevent me from becoming a victim? Yeah. And, you know, like you said, right, what we're doing, mm -hmm. we're trying to spread words, spread reality, let people know what the truth about what life is really like yeah. in the streets. And, you know, doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, you got to grow up in the ghetto. Or what? Dude, you're in Westwood, right? Yeah. Man, the amount of homelessness is, is insane. Yeah. You think they're they're not doing crime? They're doing crime every day. Got my Tacoma stolen three months ago. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for we just gotta spread the words, let people know what the truth is. And it's not gonna be a one time thing, right? It's gonna take some time to no. educate people. Yeah. To let people know, hey, you gotta see this through your own lens other than other people's lenses, right? Yeah. As simple as you know, even my girlfriend, right? Back then she was all about every single movement, you know, she's far <laughs> left and whatnot. Right, right. And she never believed in anything. Yeah. And for her to be with me as a cop, and I kind of showed her exactly what everyday life is about. Yeah. What cops deal with every single day in the streets. I'm not saying everybody's gonna experience what cops experience every single day, right? Because you could go on your whole life without encountering a single crime or seeing True. something that will you know, Rock traumatize you yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying yeah. be aware. Mm -hmm. Be aware of everything. Doesn't matter if you're in Beverly Hills. Yeah. You can see what's going on in Beverly I'll Hills. Do. You could While be there, in too. Malibu. Yeah. You could be just in a parking lot hanging yeah. out. Yeah. In the nicest area in town. You could be a victim at any point. Yeah. All we want to do is spread the awareness, open up your eyes yeah. and realize what the world is like. Because the world is ugly. Yeah. And if you cannot prepare yourself and mentally and physically prepare yourself for what the world has come for you, it's already too late, right? So you want to be ready so you don't have to get ready. Yeah, that's you know? true. And, and I will say, although the world is like nature is metal, right? Like beautiful. the world is gnarly yeah. and it's beautiful at the same oh, time. Beautiful. And the thing that I love about this is you are talking about not be, or like that we will and can be victim of circumstance. Whether that's me getting my car stolen or me being foolish and not being ready with, and not seeing my surroundings when yeah. I'm walking through a bad neighborhood, right? But ultimately, being a victim of circumstance is inevitable yeah. in this world, whether it's just petty stuff or whether it's, I don't know, whatever it is, right? And at the same time, the interesting thing is you're saying be ready, 
so that you don't so that you're not sorry and at the same time you've never let yourself be a victim right because you can be a victim of circumstance and not choose to be victimized in your narrative as to who you are and that's the the paradox as well as like the 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 thing that just like lights me up the most is that yeah, that, you know, I used to be in this place where I'm like, oh, everything's beautiful. I can save every, everyone. You know, it's all going to be love and light and all this shit. There's balance in the world, right? Yeah. We're experiencing a lot of beauty right now and we're experiencing a lot of dark. And so gnarly stuff's going to happen. Gnarly stuff's happening every day. Beautiful stuff's happening every day. That's the reality. And how we choose to perceive our reality, how we choose to respond to it is always our choice. And that's why I love how you show up because throughout life, throughout all of this adversity, all the things that you grew up with, and there's more that I know we haven't touched on, but you've chosen not to let that stop you. Yeah. And even here, you're telling people not to let it stop you. And you're also saying, and be fucking real, because yeah. it's a wild ass world out there. 100%. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you can get tossed. Yeah. If, if, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it, it, that's a sad truth. And yeah. by the time you're getting tossed, it's over, man. Like that's, that's, that's when you brought up, right? Mm. Circumstances will happen yeah. and you be a victim, right? Yeah. But do you choose to become a victim for the rest of the situation or are you no. going to bounce back and become something else yeah. and not be a victim again? Yeah. So, you know, that comes back to mental health, you yeah. know, how strong you are mentally because yeah. somebody just can't handle what, <laughs> what the world got for you, right? Then once they become yeah. a victim, that's the end of the road, right? So yeah. support system, Always check up on your friends, right? Yeah. Because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what anybody's going through mm. because you can never see through a person and a person That's will so never real. tell you the truth. Mm. And when you realize it, it might be too late. You know? You hear that? So, a thousand percent, a hundred percent, yes. Where do I even begin with that? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Thank you for yeah. saying that as a strong ass dude, because we're men, yeah. right? And I've been in part of men's work for years now. And I also have done my own medicine work journey. But like the men's work aspect and the brotherhood aspect has been so, so impactful for me to the point where I wanted to make an app where if friends weren't active on it, it would actually send you alerts to check up on them. Because how often do we know what people are going through for a lot of us i'll speak for myself when i'm going through some shit i can't even think of a person to reach out to because i'm so caught up in the in the spiral you know what i mean and when you say check up on your friends because you never know what they're going through it's entirely true Uh, there are a lot of people who are like me who seldom reach out to people if ever when they're going through something because they don't want to put it on somebody else and that's also why i'm a big proponent of therapy BetterHelp, I'm not sponsored by them yet, but BetterHelp is great. I use BetterHelp. It's like 200 bucks a month. You get like four sessions uh, a month, like once a week. Okay. And it's helped me be strong throughout my breakup, my separation of my partner for 10 years. Yep. It's helped me deal with a lot of stuff. And the thing that I love about it the most, and just therapy in general, get therapy, whatever. Point being, I work with a coach, right? My business coach, I pay a lot of money for him. We do great things. He's not there to be my therapist. Yeah. He's there to push me, keep me accountable, and help me get clarity and, and do big things. I'm not going to use that time to lay stuff onto him. My boy called me up. He's like, bro, I'm so sorry. I've been so bad at communicating all these things, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's all good, bro. You know why? Because if you were to hit me up, like, ask him, if you were to hit me up and be like, bro, shit's gone down. I, I, you know, my girl kicked me out the house, something like that. I need a spot to stay. Can I come over? I'm like, say less. Like, come over. It's not even a question. Yeah. That's the relationship. However... We don't have the relationship where it's like, hey, bro, you know, I want to tell you all these things and just unload. We don't necessarily do that with our bros because our bros are often going through a lot of shit ourselves. Yeah. And it's not that we can't, but it's like sometimes we just have so much piled up that we just need to lay that on something. That's what therapy's for. And so just saying, I love that you said that. And I'm a big proponent of therapy. And I just had this conversation with my boy the other day because... Being able to have that outlet, and I had a session today, being able to have that outlet is so important for our mental health. Because otherwise, like, we could be having fun. You and I, we can go out and do a bunch of stuff and have a great time. And yeah. there might still be that cup that needs to be empty. You know, 100%. Yeah. And I don't know, man, you know, being 
like a man in society. Mm. Nowadays might be different, right? Like yeah. when we grew up in the nineties, yeah, where we came from traditional families. You know, my grandma always say, "As a man, you rather shed blood than a tear," mm. right? Yeah. That's what you know Chinese yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. But for for uh, I guess like a friend, right? Yeah, a friend, a good friend. A lot of people are convoluting the the titles between a friend versus an acquaintance. Yeah. So a lot of people nowadays are like, oh, dude, he's my friend, man. That's mm. my good friend. No mm -hmm. worry. I'll call him if I need help. Yeah. However, in actuality, that person is only an acquaintance mm. because nowadays social media, yeah, everything you link up, whatever here, get my get my Instagram, get my right. Twitter. Right. Now you guys are talking every day, sending memes and stuff. Oh, he's my best friend now. But they don't understand. <laughs> it's so true. You know, memes do not equate to yeah. a level of like trust and the amount of memes you send to yeah. each other does not mean that you guys are best <laughs> friends or you guys are friends that can rely on each other, right? Agreed. From so people are convoluting those those titles. Yeah, it's a great. They don't. Point. They don't even understand what acquaintance means anymore, right? Mm. You go up to a bar, you meet somebody. You go yeah. to a gym, you meet somebody. Automatically, that person is a friend of yours, but. In reality, hmm. no, that's only an acquaintance. This is an interesting topic. So yeah. for us growing up in the 90s, we don't got iPads. We don't got nothing like that, yeah. right? We barely yeah. got internet back then. Yeah. We, got, we got dial up, right? Hey, yeah. mom, stop using AOL. your phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we plug in the yeah, modem. Yeah. Let me go on AOL. Go on three web pages in like 15 <laughs> minutes. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah. For, for us, seeing somebody that's a friend, right? Yeah. Dude, I've known you for almost like 10 years, bro. Yeah, yeah. For... Us growing up in the 90s, we go out there and actually conversate. We right. actually go play soccer, go play football together. Yeah. We we mess around, we fuck around all the time, right? Right. You fight, whatever you gotta do. Yeah, yeah. Go ride your bikes. Yeah. You go through some stuff together, right? Yeah. Hey man, I don't got money. Yeah. Hey, let, let, let me let me get a candy bar. <laughs> or like, hey, can your mom yeah. pick me up after this? Hey, right. can, can we go here? Can we go to movies or whatever? Yeah. Nowadays, that's all gone, right? There's no actual relationship building. Mm. in friendship mm. on top of that relationship as as boyfriend girlfriends or whatever yeah. relationship you guys have but for people to not have a support system is because of what society is creating mm. for these people mm. and they are accepting whatever is given to them yeah. as is yeah. With all these virtual reality, all this stuff they think virtual reality is a real thing, you know, that's their yeah. life now. Yeah. That's an alternate eagle. Yeah. But going back to, you know, support and mental health and, you know, therapy and all that, man, if you have a good support system and is legitimate and you built it based on genuine, you know, thoughts and attitude, yeah. You actually have a good friend that's an actual friend. Yeah. Not a virtual friend. Yeah. It could help a lot if you don't really want to go to therapy because as a man, thousand percent, that's an issue, right? Because yeah. a lot of men do not believe in therapy. <laughs> well, stop I'm believing. A, I'm gonna tell you that right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Like it's hard for us to be like, I'm gonna call up a therapist and say, "Hey, man, I'm fucked up. I need help." Yeah. A lot of men would not do that. A lot of men would. Two hundred. It's Zoom. Don't yeah. be a bitch. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> man, they, yeah. got, they don't got no, the money, but, right? Sometimes, that's true too. But you know, they, they, if you if they all got jobs, they they got it in their their healthcare plan. Just figure it out. You know, not. I'm just saying. I know. Yeah. No, I I I agree. Yeah, and yeah. after doing men's work, like I have a lot of friends who have held space for me while I'm like bawling. Yeah. And even still, like these dudes would be there for me, and yet I won't call them. And that's my issue. Yeah. But, yeah. And at the same time. It, it just I don't know. For me, it's an easier outlet. For for others, maybe it's maybe it's like that's not good for me. I got my boys. The whole they'll handle it for me. And I'm just saying, if you're one of those people who doesn't call people, I got yeah. so many bros I could call, even women I could call. One hundred percent. And I won't. And I I, I, I agree. I I, <laughs> it's I, I, terrible. I see that. It's terrible. But you know, I'm 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 going through some stuff. You know. Yeah. And I'm at an all time low, but mm -hmm. then it's okay, right? Life is good. Can't tell. Yeah. You, you, Life is always good, yeah. bro. Well, you you're know, not being a victim of your circumstances, never. which is great. I mean, it's 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 not for everybody, right? Yeah. It's it's how you perceive the world, like I said. Yeah. And for me, I don't need 200 people. I don't need to tell you. I have 100 friends, man. Yeah. All I need is yeah. five or two or three. 100%. That's all I need. 100%. And 
not even like I don't really need to like spill my beans, right? Because yeah, I feel like as a man, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't want to project your issue onto one of your best friend or best homie or whatever. Right. Now that homie and that friend is gonna be like, damn, dude, I gotta do something. Like they feel obligated, right? Right, right, right. right. At yeah. that point, I feel like I have failed him. Mm. Like I don't yeah. want you to bur take my burden and put it upon yourself mm. and handle my issue. Mm. Because as a man, I'm gonna do it, right? I got this. Mm. Mm. But just be there for me, right? Yeah. Like, dude, crack a cold one. Let's kick it. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Let, let's just go drive around. <laughs> you know? Let's just go, you know, shoot the shit, right? Go yeah. go get some food. Yeah. Just being out of your just to temporarily stop whatever you you have in your mind, that's a good break. That's a good mental break, right? Because then after that, I come back in my own space, in my own little home, whatever I'm doing. Now I'm ready. Yeah. Now I, I got clarity. Right now I'm like, okay, dude, I'm fresh. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Then I'm gonna think, okay, what's my next plan? Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm down. Now you're to back my, to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because I got that break. Yeah. And a lot of people need that. And you know, for you to say, oh, hey, you might want to spill your bean and talk to all these therapists, but some people, they don't even have that first step of getting a break from their negative encounter, right. their negative situation. Yeah. You know, try having a little break, trying to get somebody that you actually care, some somebody that actually care for you. Yeah. To take a break. Once you get that break, it's gonna help you out to kind of figure out what's the next step. And if you keep continuing on, yeah, you're having this situation going and going, it's getting worse, you know, therapy. <laughs> try it out. Yeah. Right? I mean, and and I, I love this because everyone processes things yeah. different, right? And interesting thing you were talking about you don't want to put your burden onto onto yeah. your brother we actually have a term for that um it was a working title for our for our doc it was called a beautiful burden which is about like the burden that we like that as men we don't have to carry our burdens alone mm -hmm. right and that our brothers can help us carry it with us but anyways just wanted to touch on that but it's nice but yeah and you know like you said, like I said, like everyone processes things differently. So for me, it makes me feel really nice and clean to keep my relationships like, you're my boy, let's go have fun. Yeah. And then I got someone who's like handling it for me. And that's money well spent, especially when I like my my bro time, my friend time is my friend time. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. coach time for business, that's business, you know? And then when I got my own issues, I got someone dedicated who's in my corner. And I like that because... <clears throat> I feel like a lot of people don't reach out like my buddy and me because we don't have that person in the corner. If he had talked to that person and, you know, emptied his cup, then he'd be like, yo, what's up, bro? How you doing? Instead, he's like, I can't even talk to you right now. My cup's so full. I'm just going to spill this shit all over you. You know what I mean? So I think everyone process is different. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I love hearing how you do it because you're able to kind of be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on the side. I'm going to yeah. shelve this for a second. Let's just have fun. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah, you know? because like you said, right? Like being with people, man, you vibe yeah. off of each other, dude. Yeah, yeah. 100%. When something is off, it's just not cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's better to just kind of take a break from what your mental break from whatever you're dealing with. And, you know, focus focus on life. You That's know, cool. you only got now. Yeah. After this minute, it's gone, it's gone. You get what I'm saying? Hey. You only got the video to review it. That's all you got, right? <laughs> you know I what mean, I'm saying? I love it. Yeah, because I, I, I can learn from you. I can learn from how you process things and other people can too and other people can relate because not everyone's going to relate with me. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, and that that's fascinating. And, yeah. you know, to circle back all this, right? All this help, yeah. all this mental health. Yeah. Um, You know, we're talking about men health, you know, but, yeah. you know, women can kind of take whatever we're saying and, and you know, kind of take it bits by bits, you know, yeah, to yeah. kind of figure out how, how it relates to your life, you know, because I can't really speak on how women think and how women operates, right? Of course. But we don't want to be, you know, just exclusive to men, but it, yeah. just mental health in general. Like everybody needs help. You guys going to get help, right? 100%. But, you know, to go back, to relate back to all this, mm. to policing, right? Yeah. That's a big issue. Mm. And a lot of police officers they have the title, right? I'm a cop. Yeah. I'm I'm Superman, bro. Like I can handle anything. Mm, yeah. I'm going to go calls to calls to calls. I'm going to work 18 hours a day, five yeah. days a week, sleep for two hours, go to the gym, be fit, go to work for 16 hours, come home, sleep for two hours, handle my two newborns, How? handle my wife, oh, whatever, my girlfriend. <laughs> and you know, you do this every day, right? Yeah. They're burnt out. 
Two hours of sleep? Yeah, two, three hours. You, you lying. Know? Yeah, two, three hours, four hours would be great, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm I sure. Would, I would die. Yeah, I, would, I mean, some I would, people would sleep would in the die. car at the station because oh, yeah. it takes okay. too long to go home. They would sleep in the car and go right back to work. I mean, there, there, there are things out there, man. And a lot of media and a lot of people are not covering the yeah. suicidal rates of police officers. Mm. And it just sucks because you kind of have a stigma yeah. of, hey, he's a cop. He's good. He's, he's Superman. Don't worry about him. Yeah. Or people are just callous as fuck. Just, it's, yeah. Cold hearted as fuck about it. Yeah. You know, personal experience, right? Mm -hmm. You know, something traumatic happened at mm -hmm. work. You tell somebody about it. And you know what? Most, most of them would say, hey, you know what? You signed up for it. Mm. That's what you get. That like tough guy type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of yeah. like the idea of what people yeah. see cops as. Right. And in reality, once that uniform goes out, you go back home, you're your regular family man, right? Yeah. Your yeah. regular neighbor. Yeah. I'm your neighbor, Joe. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mow my lawn. I, you know, I sit in the backyard. I do everything you do. Right. Just because I put on that uniform doesn't mean I'm a different person, right? Right. So a lot of coppers out there man it's, it's it's hard it's hard for them to even talk to somebody right right so that's why there's a lot of alcohol abuse right a lot of anger yeah because a lot of people don't know how to find outlets right well no and one can relate too right it's hard right yeah yeah I, like yeah. you know good homies will, will listen to yeah, me yeah. and stuff yeah but at the end of the day i'm just telling you a story right yeah because you can't really tell me no what steps to take and how to deal with it yeah so now, I'm sure you see like almost every, like 90% of policing you see, right? Police officers are fat, out of shape. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Aston or Ronnie Coleman. No. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, wait, baby. I'm yeah. just saying, as simple as I. So here, here comes the sacrifices, right? Like I said, yeah, we, we work yeah. long hours. Yeah. Um, sometimes you really got to make that decision, right? Either am I going to make that money? Or am I going to focus on my health? Mm, yeah. And a lot of people choose the money, right? Right. When they don't get, cops don't get paid that much. No. People th like, Dude, the know, amount that you sacrifice and risk yeah. for the amount you get paid is insane. I mean, with overtime and stuff, yeah. you could live a real good life. Totally. But in comparison to what, you yeah. know, people might be thinking, I don't know. I don't think people really know the minutiae no. of all that. And then, you know, you know, after tax and all this. It's not like you're, yeah. uh, you know, like a doc, you're not getting the salary of a doctor yeah. or an attorney or, you know, an influencer. And yet you're yeah. putting your life on the line. You're, you're not doing, getting sleep. You're doing all these things. Yeah. Sacrificing your body. Even sitting in a car. Yeah. I mean. All day is taxing on your body. Dude, everybody, you know? almost every cop has back problems yeah. within the first five For years, sure. right? Like 100%. lower lower back yep. problems, sitting, surgeries, like yeah. whatever, even walking with yeah. the belt. The belt is about 30 pounds. Depends on what you right. got on it, right? 30 or 40 pounds. You got a plate on you too? Yeah. Um, It depends. Depends, depends. on the department. Yeah. But uh, most of them don't have like a armor plate. Mm. They're usually like soft, soft armors, plate. right? But it still it still messes with your whole body. 100%. You're all like bent over. Exactly. And stuff. It's not comfortable. But- Going back to how you can deal with your mental health, if you don't want to talk to people, if you don't want to see a therapist, because yeah. every police department offers free behavior services, right? You get yeah. free therapy sessions right. for yourself and your partner. Wow. But I don't know what the rate is, but I'm pretty sure majority of them don't even go. Don't use it, right? Right, right. Yeah. Because you don't want to be like, oh man, look at that guy. Man, yeah. He can't handle himself, right? Yeah, so emasculated. You, yeah. Because it's which done, is stupid. Right? Yeah. You're done. Yeah, yeah. So- you know, I'm kind of one of those, right? I never went to therapy. I never mm. want to talk to people. You know, you talk to friends here and there, talk to your loved ones, whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of us need space on our own. Mm. We like to be alone. Yeah. And we don't like to interact with people because we already interact with people every day. Yeah. So me personally, I like to be alone. I need my own space, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll go to the gym. Yeah. Every oh, gym is day. church, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, maybe, you know, it, it's, it's tough to start, yeah. especially when, when, when someone is overweight, when mm -hmm. someone's been not active for a long time. Right. Just so used to the overtime hours of the, as a police station, you know? Yeah. Kind of step back and, you know, give time to yourself, mm -hmm. heal yourself, love yourself, go to the right? gym. Yeah. yeah. Self love. Yeah. yeah. And for me to just sit at the gym for two hours, three hours, yeah. people are like, why, why are you there for so long? It clears up my mind, right? Mm -hmm. I need that. I need that space. Mm -hmm. Put on my headphones. I don't hear anything but myself. Yeah. And just do what you do. 
Yeah. After that, you refresh, ready to go again. Yeah. That's that's kind of like the outlet how I I take into account right how mm-hmm. how to how to become a more positive how to become a better person. Yeah. After dealing with all these horrific stuff, all this bad stuff that I see every right. day. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, this is this is wisdom right here. Cause not every so once again, not everyone, you know, it's funny. Cause like our relation is break dancing and being short and Asian, <laughs> right? And and also, you know, being fighters, like I've been a fighter my whole life, but I've never been a cop. I know how to use guns. I grew up in a gun family, I've never been a cop. But, you know, similar to how an alcoholic, you know, someone could, you know, write all these books on, oh, this is why you shouldn't drink alcohol. It's like an alcoholic doesn't want to hear that from that guy. He wants to hear from the guy who was a raging alcoholic who was able to help themselves and yeah. save themselves, right? And in that same vein, you're one of these police officers who chose not to be a victim of their circumstances, chose to do the right thing. You know, like you at at a at a level you already know and knew while you're doing it. If I don't go to if I don't go to the gym and do this for my own mental health, if I don't go and hang out with buddies, if I don't do these things, it's gonna be bad. And there are people who don't choose to do that, and because at a level they're self sabotaging, yeah. even policemen. Mm-hmm. Even people in, in CEO, all sorts of people, no matter what status they are, can choose to self-sabotage. And what I love about what you're saying is that you're doing the things to do the opposite, to benefit yourself, to put yourself in the most advantageous space because you're not creating that misery story narrative, yeah. which is what so many people do. So I commend you for doing that. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing I just want to mention, because you had brought up AI earlier and we're talking about being a police officer and stuff. Have you seen the video where they put the people in AI? And they're they're doing like a, a police uh, like a building search or something. Yeah, no, and they I, I shoot. Ev- oh, they shoot all the wrong people. They freak <laughs> out. They freak out. And and it's so funny because you're talking about these police officers not getting sleep. Yeah, you know, being in this whole potentially you know misaligned, toxic, whatever you want to call it, masculine environment, right? Yeah. Hyper masculine environment. Not getting therapy. All these things. Not doing the things that you're doing in order to regulate yourself emotionally, mentally, physically, mm-hmm. right? And then they get put into these really high stakes. Like it's not AI. You're gonna die. Yeah. It's the highest of stakes. Like you, you make one wrong move and you're like, oh, should I, should I be safe to this person who's gonna try to kill? And then boom, you're gone. You're like, ah, oh, that was like 40 years of life. Now I didn't get to see my kids grow up. Yeah. Now I don't get to. It's like in that split moment, they gotta make decisions. Yeah. And they're making the decisions. I love my family. I want to see my kids grow up. And this person is dangerous let me try to make sure they're not okay i gotta do what i gotta do and it's funny how these civilians will put so much pressure on the people who who do it and then they go into ai they're shooting everybody (laughs) i find that fucking hilarious and also a testament to like when you're actually there like no one knows no i don't know having a gun pointed you know you know it's a different story you know what i'm saying but for us like you said right yeah it's not even just ourselves yeah as a police department, as a police officer in the police department, yeah, you're taught to not, you're not an individual, right? Mm. Every time you go to a call, like you said, high stake or like whatever, yeah. you gotta go, go in the house after a shooting yeah. or you gotta go, you know, clearance, right? Yeah. You gotta do, you know, the safety check, basically. Mm. Make sure nobody right. else in the car, in the house with a gun or whatever. Yeah. So you gotta do a building search. Yeah. You going in there, usually a team of four, if you can. Yeah. A team of four to five with a canine, whatever you do. Yeah. If you are leading your life is at stake, right? 100%. However, she... as as that point, man, it's crazy because you don't even think about yourself. You right. think about what am I going to do to make sure my buddies are safe? 100%. Everybody behind yeah. me. This yeah. It's tactical. Whatever I'm doing, yeah. I got to make sure everybody goes home at the end of the day, including myself. Right. But it's it comes back to a lot of selflessness, right? A lot of yeah. coppers, they yeah. don't care, right? They mm-hmm. will put their life on the line for everybody else in the department. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, that's, it's crazy, man. Like to be able to, to see that, you know, you're able to put your life on that line, not for just a citizen, but for your brothers and your sisters. I mean, because once again, you know, similar to like being in the military, it's it's essentially like the military, right? Like there's, these are, these are the individuals who understand you. Yep. And there's some of the only few that understand you. The only other people who could potentially understand what you go through is people who have been in war. Right. And even still that's different. And they both have their... There are things that might be more intense, less intense, so forth. Yeah. But like, you know, you know, thinking about it, I would 
<laughs> I've had to go into tenant spaces or other other you know real estate. You know, I've been in real estate. <laughs> like I've gone into people's homes where I'm like, oh, this is creepy. Imagine going into someone's home where they might be armed. Like I bet you, everyone who's watching this would would shit their pants. Like they'd just be so mortified, terrified, even if they did have a firearm, right? And yet yeah. we're, we're living in a society that demonizes the people who we call to be brave and be courageous and put their lives on the line, not in the hypothetical sense, but in the real sense. And that's something that I just want to make poignant right now is that so many, like not only will so many people in life choose to be victims, not mm -hmm. only victims of circumstance, but be a victim like, oh, this happened to me. And so therefore I'm powerless and all this stuff. Not only will they, they be that, but to perpetuate a society that, that, glorifies and, per and perpetuates demonizing individuals who are brave, who are courageous, who are noble, who are honorable, who have integrity. They talk about in the Bible, the devil, you know, ruling the world. Like that sounds like some devilish type of shit. You know what I mean? Because what it does is it, it, you know, proliferates this whole ideation of being less than, being, being scum, being whatever it is, like yeah. selling your body on the internet for nothing and feeling like that's empowerment, like all these things. Yeah. And at the, at, the, at the root of it all, my perspective and my trust is to know that everything happens for a reason and everything's a blessing. And so in that, everything's working its, itself out in a way, yeah. right? And so we have to be encountering all this messiness of course. in order to be like, yeah, we got to clean our room. Yeah. And with that being said, I just want to thank you for helping be a part of cleaning our room. Oh man. And and being an example <laughs> of of how to be cuz how you are operating in all these ways as a family man, as a former police officer, as just a citizen, you know, and as someone who's uh lived in multiple countries is multilingual and also just like a badass b-boy uh fit, you know, Asian man. Um, it speaks it. volumes, you know, truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah. that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to who yeah. you are and what you want to do for yourself. Yeah, who you choose to be, yeah, right? Exactly. Because yeah. nobody in this world is going to give you the road. Nobody in this world, mm -hmm. it's going to be the person, hey, this is step one, step two, step three. Yeah. And this is how you become a millionaire. Yeah. This is how you become the best fit person this is how you become the best dancer this is yeah. how you become the best cop yeah that will never happen i'm yeah. gonna tell you that right now yep. no matter how good your mentor is that's not gonna happen yep the only way to do it this is what, what you said earlier right you gotta fail mm. what we call it right failing forward yep yep in order to fail you're gonna learn your mistakes and you're gonna yeah. move on and you're gonna be a better person from your mistake hopefully right yeah because some people you you fail and you, yeah. you don't learn from your mistake, you're going to keep going back and back and back right. and back. Right. So you, there's there's no no turning. Yeah. Then you become yeah. just a victim and you know, just dwindle down right. how it is. But failing doesn't mean that you fail at life. Right. So failing 100%. just means that it's not the right time at that moment. Yeah. Learn from it. Yep. And how to improve and become a better person. Yep. You know, nobody's perfect. No. You know, I made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Went through a lot of things. Um, just never let it keep you down. Mm. Don't let anybody push you down. Mm. Don't listen to what other people tell you because other people find joy in your misery. Yeah. And you don't allow that mm -hmm. because if you do, you lost their battle mm -hmm. and you can never come back up from that, right? If you keep letting people do that. Yep. So mm. be yourself, be strong, be who you are. You know, don't, don't anybody tell you you can't do something. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. but also be realistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah 100%. So stay positive. Like I always mm -hmm. say, people say, how do you just stay positive? Stay positive. Mm -hmm. Be happy. Think, find the good things in life rather than focusing on the negatives in life. And you're choosing that. You you're choose choosing that, that you in every to. moment. Yeah. Because if you don't, that's when it goes bad, right? Yep. And yep. all people always say, oh, it's so easy for you to say. Well, try it. Yeah. It might work, right? It gets easier every time, yeah. right? But it's a... You know, I get into the weeds, into the, into the intellectual space of this, and a lot of my guests are just like, "This is what it is," and they say it easy, and it makes sense. And I like to find the evidence of it, mm -hmm. or or, or ha have the formula and have it make sense yeah, yeah. in my brain, so that because my brain wants to debunk everything all the time, 
even though I know it. That's who you are, man. That's who I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And You're like MythBusters, right? But the but the but the evidence of it, <laughs> the evidence of it is that in every single moment you're choosing that because there yeah. could be that voice in the back that says, "You don't know what the fuck you're talking about." You're like, "Yeah, dude, I'm choosing this right now." Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm choosing this. I'm choosing this. I'm choosing this. I'm choosing. I'm choosing. In every every moment, and then it becomes normalcy. Mm -hmm. It's not a. I want to be positive. Don't be positive, bitch. Oh, oh, it didn't happen. Oh, I'm a bit. No. We're, we're, and, and that's, that's my goal is to <clears throat> cut the veil and cut the shit that we're that powerful, mm -hmm. that we're creating our reality in every moment. Because even as we're just saying this, in every moment, choosing to be positive, that's you creating your reality. Yeah. That's a lens of perception that you're choosing. And that's the power, the free will. The power is, is in the choice. Yeah. And everyone in every moment is choosing whether they choose to be the victim or whether they choose to be the hero of their own story like yeah. you. But we're choosing it, right? And my, my goal is to have mainstream consensus. I'm cool with people being victims. I'm cool with, you yeah. know, there's going to be balance. There's going to be people being dope as fuck. And there's going to be people being, you know, dum-dums, right? Yeah. And I'm not cool with us playing this game in society where we're like spreading this narrative that people are less than and people don't have that power. And oh, yeah, that is right. You, you are that powerless. You don't have a choice. Yeah, you do. Fuck that. Yeah. Anyone who's saying that, smack him across the face. That's, that's bullshit. <laughs> and that, and that's, that's actually uh, the biggest insult to someone's divinity, in my opinion. Like their and true individuality. Yeah, yeah, their true essence of their power. To, to yeah. say that is like, talk about blasphemy. Because yeah. you, you're, you're a child of God. You got God in you. Like yeah. You got spirit. To say that you don't have the power to choose you know how to perceive every moment like i could yeah. get my car stolen and be like that's okay life's gonna be good you can have this stuff happening too you could be like you know what i'm gonna choose to be positive you have we have that capacity right we have the we have the opportunity to choose that now are we that's for us to decide individuals right yeah. but to to say and perpetuate throughout society that we don't have that opportunity bullshit false yeah wrong yeah, yeah it's wrong <laughs> Is for sure. That's it. I love it. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know, reach out. Yeah. If anybody needs help, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. make sure you have a good peer support system. Mm. Make sure you got people that actually care about you. You know, like I said earlier, man, acquaintances is different than a friend. Yeah. yeah. Understand your differences and don't spill your beans to everybody, right? Because not everybody's mm. out there to support you. It's 100% true. Yeah. That's, that's you know. wise words right there. And what would you say to people who don't have those people that they truly feel they can um, have the support? You know, a lot of these relationships is built, right? Yeah. 10 year, yeah. five year, right. one year. Yeah. It, it, it's all different, right? Yeah. Every individual is different. Yeah. So it just really depends on how you as an individual portray yourself mm. to the other individual mm. and how transparent you guys are together and how real you guys keep it, right? Yeah. Because I can be your best friend, bro. Mm. I can say whatever you want me to say, right? Yeah. Oh man, you wanna do that? Oh yeah, do it, man. Heck yeah. But in reality, <laughs> I know you're gonna fuck up, right? <laughs> yeah. So how true is, is is the person, right? Right. So you always go back to, okay, Let's go through some stuff together. Yeah. Let's go do some stuff together. Yeah. Let's see what happens when I fail. And like they always say, right? Right. You can only tell who your true friends are when you're down on your knees, right? When you are at that point, at like yeah. the end of the rope. Yeah. You call that person and that person, you don't got to say nothing, right? Mm -hmm. That person already knows what to do and what to say mm -hmm. without you even have to speak a word because they know you that well. Mm. And for you to have to trust that person you as an individual has to decide okay this is what i see this is what i think is like he's genuine or she's genuine yeah nobody can tell you that that person is good for you that person is good for you you as an individual gotta go through your life life experience yeah whatever wisdom you got whatever lessons you learn whatever failure you, you've been through yeah to go ahead and identify this person if this mm -hmm. person is legitimate for you right if you don't have a person where you can call right now, hey, do I need help? Mm -hmm. Or a couple of people, hey, I'm stuck on the freeway, I need help. Yeah. You, you, you might want to start, 
you know, thinking about yeah. who you are and maybe the problem is not the people. Right. It might be you as an individual. Right. And it might be not cultivating and fostering yeah. the right relationships and spreading yeah. it too thin. Right. Because you might not be true to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem, right? Yeah, it's true. I, I, I can relate to that in the sense that for a while I thought I had a lot of friends when yeah. I was a financial advisor. I was like, oh, all these people love me and so forth. And in the level they do, they admired me or they like, mm -hmm. you know, in these ways. And yet I thought that the depth of relationship on my end, receiving that love was deeper than it was. Yeah. Right. And then to be like, oh, okay. These, these are, these are my core real friends who actually truly appreciate me and trust me and, and who are willing to, you know, potentially take a risk on me. And then everyone else is just acquaintances, like you said. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, something that came up, I, I think maybe it was just, I was hearing hearing it and it just kind of came up for me. I don't know if it's necessarily like in the same vein, but just something I wanted to talk about and get your opinion on, you know, obviously in the realms of like law and everything like that, consent is a big thing, right? Yeah. We were talking, we were talking about boundaries earlier and all this stuff. And yeah. one of my favorite topics and lenses now to think about, you know, that I'm putting into my new book is the consent to let someone suffer. And it's interesting because it's kind of like the antithesis of what we're talking about, about, being there for someone, and that's mm -hmm. different, right? But there's also something when it comes to people, for instance, who are testing boundaries and us trying to save them from their own misery story that they're choosing in every moment, right? Mm -hmm. It's different if your friend's like, bro, I got issues right now. Please help me. That's different because you're asking yeah, for it as opposed to someone who's like, you know, I'm just going to basically see how long I could ride this thing until someone stops me. Mm -hmm. And then for people to be like, oh, we have to save them. It's like, did you get consent to save them from their suffering? They're doing that intentionally. Yeah. Don't act like they're not choosing that. And in doing so, is that actually blaspheming their, their choice, the power of their choice? In my opinion, I think it is. And it's interesting because you, as being someone who's upheld the law in, you know, in, in the police, like, not only are you not able to potentially do your job and, and, and you know, enforce it the yeah. way it is now, but also when we think about it from like a principle standpoint, we're like, oh, you know, you can't, I don't know, there's consent for everything, drinking alcohol, sex, all these yeah. things. And yet when it comes to suffering, it's like, oh no, we have to save people from themselves. It's like, they're doing that for a reason. There's yeah. obviously like growth for them there. There's a purpose to that. Somehow we might not know, but is it for us to intervene? Maybe if it's like them going to hurt themselves or hurt somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, like to have this altruistic, you know, type of archetype. I'm a hero kind of. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like gotcha. we need to be the heroes of our own dream. That's yeah. the only way we're a real hero. Being the hero to someone else when they haven't consented for it and like they're choosing misery, that's actually like in a way it's a little insidious in my opinion because if I'm seeing this arc for them, like this is them in their misery story and they finally need to hit that wall, finally need to reach that boundary and consequence to then change their life around and to stop them there, that's actually me denying them of their, their whole arc of them becoming the hero of their own journey, which is actually pretty effed up. That's interesting, man. Isn't it? how you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, man. I... In a way, I kind of agree with, with what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't really have an opinion because I never even think about that, bro. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't even think of things uh, like that. I think of things like this. This is Sean, so everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can kind of tell you stories, right? Yeah. Of, of kind of what the idea that, that, that you're, you brought up, mm. um, you know, working yeah. as a cop, dealing with people that are on the streets all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can almost tell you 99 or 98% of people choose to be homeless. Yeah. Choose to be on the street. Right. That kind of ties back to what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Are we forcing these people or not giving, you know, enabling, not, not getting consent from yeah. them to help them, yeah. to place them into halfway homes, help place them into a hotel, to place right. them into some sort of housing mm -hmm. for good. Mm hmm. In a way, a lot of them tried it, right? Yeah. Where, like, hey, man, you can't be in the streets. Instead of me arresting you, yeah. hey, try this out. Yeah. I'm going to have a social worker come talk yeah. to you. Then they're, they're kind of like, okay, dude, I'm, I'm tired of being harassed. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and just try this housing out. Yeah. And I'll see them gone for yeah. a week. And I see them. Why are you back on the street? Mm -hmm. and, oh, I hate it. 
I hate it over there. I hate all the rules. I hate all the curfews. I hate that I can't do this, this, and this. I'd rather be in the streets. Yep. Because I can be myself. I can be free. And I'll figure it out myself. I'd rather live in the slums and not have running water, not have toilets. But also not have to comply with any Ex boundaries or rules. Exactly. Right? So once again, we're dealing with someone who's regulated and being like an older child. Yep. And at the same time, it's like, okay, now, without their consent, we kind of took them out the streets. Right. So now, they're back in the streets and with no boundaries. Right. So what do we do to help these people? And how long is it going to take for them to hit that wall to turn around and, and start And will they journey? ever if we keep exactly. enabling it? That's my point. So there's, yeah. there's, there's, it's like one bounce back this way and then bounce back this way. Yep. And it's just going back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in a way you might need to enforce the law, but no, that's it. Yeah. So no consent is needed. Right. Yeah. But there are individuals out there where they're like, okay, I need help. Yeah. And you okay, you grab them and 100%. that's good. Right. So I, that's a hard one, man, you know? But there are, there are, in, so to all the people who are hearing this and being like, oh, that dude's an asshole, right? Talking, talking about me. Um, <laughs> I used to be supremely altruistic, supremely like, I want to save everyone type yeah, of thing. I remember. I, yeah, he knows. Yeah. You know, I had hair down here, you know, yeah, 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 being yeah. a hippie, all these things. I used to have this, I had this thought that I thought was genius, right? I was like, we're going to utilize government subsidies and all these things. We'll get all these returned phones, older phones. We'll make some billboards be like, come to this corner at this corner, blah, blah, blah. If you're homeless, blah, blah, blah. We'll give you a free phone. We're going to get you set up. We, you know, um, renovate these old buildings in downtown LA, make them in a pod hotels like in Japan and Asia. Yeah, yeah. And then basically get them showered, get them cut up, get, have, they, all, they all have like dope ass uniforms that are like, they don't not look like prison, but they look, <laughs> they look good. And then they basically go do task rabbit type stuff. And for three months, they start working off the amount of money that it takes to do this thing. And then after that, they can continue to live there and start yeah. saving money yeah. and or blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this is legit. Oh, and they can use government subsidies to either get bird scooters or Ubers to work, okay. right? I was like, that's sick. And then this one, per I shared it with this one person and she was like, what if they do it and they flunk out or whatever? And I'm like, well, there'll be like a two strikes thing and then you're out type of thing, I guess. And she's like, okay, what if after that? And then I'm like, uh, then they go back to being homeless. And she's like, all right, what if, what if no one makes it through? What if they all choose not to do it because they don't want to work? Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. That's the reality. Yeah. And, and the messed up thing is you got people who are around our age, right? Back when it was our parents' time, they could work a regular job and afford a home. Mm -hmm. Now people are paying more than a mortgage for an apartment, yep. right? And so, and they're not saving anything and being an ex-financial advisor and seeing how people's, people are scaling towards not having retirement, also not having long-term care for their parents and their parents not having retirement, like literally a leaning tower of retirement and long-term care that's falling onto them. So even if they have their lives right, they could be spending all their money for their own retirement to take care of their parents because yeah. people are getting older because, you know, medicine's advancing and yet it takes a lot. Yeah. So Caregiving and all these things. A hundred percent. Yeah. And to have these individuals trying to do everything honorably and in integrity and not freaking selling their buttholes for, you know, millions of dollars on the internet and all these things, and then having to deal with not only having the police be able to appropriately address crime, yeah. and then having to have these individuals have literally no boundaries and be enabled to be in, within the same zone, literally maybe right outside their house, mm -hmm. not have their kids be able to walk to school yeah. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, this is we're we're living in two different realities here. Yeah. And we're we're fostering chaos. Yeah, like, enabling it. Yeah, enabling and yeah. cultivating yeah. like opportunities for for chaos and, and tragedy. Yeah. And it's like, yo, it it anyways. Um yeah. 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 Consent or no consent. You know. I'm just saying, like, yeah. I, uh, uh, the way that I see it, I tap into the space of, like, you know, you, you see it so clearly, and so, and that's why I love it, because you're doing it naturally without having to be all, you know, yeah. like me about it. But what you're doing is essentially owning your divinity in the sense that, like, you're being like, hey, I'm creating this thing right now. I'm creating the show. So I can choose to create it in a negative way or a positive way, and I'm choosing the positive, 100%. right? And in that, when we talk about the consent, 
Like you could choose to be in your misery story. You could choose to screw everything up. Some of your friends, like I may be, I may be like, yo, bro, let's let's switch this around. And for the government and or social programs or just people of the world to be like, oh, you're this person who has no power. You're so helpless. That's my problem. When it, that's that's the thing that I'm talking about with consent yeah. is like for someone to try to try to uh, you know belittle others yeah. and treat them as though they're helpless instead of empower them to own their own power. That's the insidious part. It's not the helping. Yeah, yeah. Because we want to help everyone, but it's like, and then also to potentially take away the lesson in the person choosing that misery story and not having that boundary or that that consequence, that wall to press up against and be like, oh, sh- oh, damn, the pan's hot. All right, the fire's hot. Let me let me take a step back. Yeah, you, gotta, you know, you gotta, yeah, yeah. Learn that. That's that's it. Yeah. I get you. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, that's- you know. Yeah. But um, yo, I I just want to say like this has been amazing, and we can I do this it. again, and I'd love to do it yeah, again. Yeah, I might but- have like more experience later on, so moving on and next chapter in life. So 100%. I might come back with, with a diff, different life lesson, different perspective. Yeah, and, there, and as, as society changes too. 100%. But I want to say once again, thank you for being the, the man that you are. Appreciate it. And for, for us being able to have this discourse, because not only is it like healing and, and a joy for me to have, but like the fact that we can eternalize this conversation, put it out yep. onto the internet in a way where people can learn from it. Because like I've said, I said on the phone with you and stuff like, who who hears us? Yeah. Like now Asians are finally in the media, but who hears us? Man, and I, and no one I've never heard your perspective, so I'm grateful. Yeah. You know, just to kind of end yeah. it and and yeah. kind of tie back to everything why I'm here and yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, whoever is watching and listening mm. and you're afraid to take that step, especially like like Sean was saying, right? Mm. As a minority in America, as as an Asian, male or female, doesn't matter. There's always a stereotype. There's always a way like, hey, you're supposed to be this person, right? Right. You're a cop? What? Like, they, they're always surprised when, when people find out, right? Because they're mm. like, oh, I thought you were a lawyer. Oh, I thought you were an engineer. Like some, you, you're pretty clean cut, bro. You know, and you're a buff dude. But oh, yeah. Always, right? They, they're always <laughs> like that, right? So in my head, yeah. why, why is it always yeah. these type of profession, these type of stereotypes? Yeah, projections, yeah. So whoever you are, you want to be a cop. You want to be a military, yeah. but obviously your family might not approve or approve or what, whatever it is, and you need the extra push. Know that, you know, it doesn't matter how tall, how big, doesn't matter what people think about you, doesn't matter that, oh, you know, cop needs to be at least six feet tall, 500 pounds, full of muscle, you know, mm-hmm. raging, you know? No. It's only Ronnie Coleman. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's all, it's all about... Uh, you yeah. know how smart you are. Yeah. How you can articulate things. How you can just keep the wheels moving. Yeah. Right. Not everything is about physical. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter how big or how small you are. Do what you want to do. Be who you are. Mm. Don't be afraid. Mm. And you want to you want to step out of your boundaries. You want to step out of the traditional norm of what you know an Asian family household is is known to do or known to be. Yeah. Do it. Mm. You can only live. You know, who knows how long you're going to live, right? Yeah. You don't facts. do it, then what? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, don't be afraid. Mm. Trust yourself. If you fail, it's a great lesson. Mm. You're going to be a wiser man. You're going to be a better person. Yep. And you can just continue on with life. Mm. There's no issue with that. Mm. And a fail, you got to start. 100%. Mm. Everybody fails. Yeah. You know, you lose everything. You have yeah. to lose everything. Mm. You lost everything. I lost everything. Yeah. And we gained so much from it. Yeah. 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 Have good people around you. Yeah. You know, be wise. Solid. Be wise, smart. wise words from a wise man. <laughs> I appreciate you, my guy. Love Thank you, Thank you bro. for coming on. Love you too. Thank you. This has been the Magnanimous Collective. Big thanks to my guest, Aston Chan. Magnanimous. Thanks for having himself. me. Bro, it's been a pleasure. All right, y'all. Tune in for the next one. Appreciate you. See you on the next Talk one. Talk to you later. Cheers. She- <laughs>